for teens out on California's roadways, according to the State Department of Insurance. The CDC says car crash death rates in the U.S. are already higher than in most other high-income countries. And the rates? Well, they're rising. Injuries from such crashes are the leading reason someone would need care in a trauma center. And we know that doctors will be there for us after a crisis, but at Kaiser Permanente South Sacramento, trauma doctors and nurses do a lot of work to keep those kinds of accident victims from ever coming into their ER. Nurse Christine McGahey, the director of the trauma program at Kaiser South Sac with me now live. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Definitely. First, I have to ask, with us being in this deadly 100-day window for teens and crashes, if it doesn't happen this shift, you must kind of always be thinking it's probably going to be next shift. Yeah, I mean, it's been pretty busy um, in general. I mean, every shift we are impacting for the next, for sure. What are the unsafe or kind of lax driving practices that you see the result of most often in the trauma center? Well, factors of unsafe driving include things like driving impaired, driving distracted and reckless driving. You know, with impaired driving, you're 17 times more likely to die in crashes when impaired with alcohol or cannabis and DUI collisions are 100% preventable. Research shows that talking on the phone while driving increases the risk of collision up to four times and driving while texting is eight times. And, and you're we know that people, mm -hmm. oh, sorry. No, 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 go ahead. And people wearing, uh, not wearing their seatbelts uh, are 30 times more likely to be ejected from a vehicle um, during a crash. And three out of four of those people die during, from their injuries. So it's really scary. And you've kind of run down all of the things that we know new drivers and then young drivers do. They're on the phone, they're texting, they want to be cool yeah. in front of their friends. And so maybe they're not putting on their, you know, safety uh, belt. So those are all of the things that could really play into, even if there is a crash, it ended up being worse in terms of what happens to them in terms of injury or potential death than it might have been otherwise if you had taken the safety precaution of putting the belt on or putting the phone down. Now, prevention partnerships and community outreach are two of the things that you really have focused on. And most people wouldn't think that doctors would be necessarily involved with. One of your partners is the Arrive Alive group. Tell me about that effort. Yeah, Arrive Alive is a great program. This program holds a real life sentencing during an assembly at high schools um, with a real judge and attorneys and et cetera. Uh, this teaches students about the ramifications of drinking while driving and what receiving a DUI can do financially, socially, um, you know, and physically. So it's a great program. You all are also very involved with Every 15 Minutes, which focuses on high school juniors and se uh, seniors. And zeroes in not only on the individual decision to drink and drive, but also what effect bad decisions could have on their loved ones. Yeah, that program is so wonderful. I mean, it, it really, it does. It has the juniors and seniors and it's a staged head-on crash uh, that you can see there in the video. Um, and this injuries, um, these injuries are, are taken through um, what the medical care can do, um, the grieving of the families, funerals. I mean, it's all done um, at the high school with the students. And so it's, while the crash scene and injuries are fake, the lessons learned are very, very uh, surreal. And hopefully lasting so that they are thinking about them now during this most dangerous window. You also are involved with Impact Teen Driver. How does that work? So the, that program provides education and reckless and distracted driving for teens and parents. And so, you know, one of the things we like to focus on is um, parents because, um, you know, they are what the, the kids from early age are seeing. And so we really have... Um, share real stories that connect with teens and empower them to take the lead in speaking up um, about strategies to keep themselves safe. So we have real um, students that have been affected by it, whether it was through themselves or with a family member, um, and they come in and speak to the students uh, peer to peer. So it's a great program as well. So what do you think you're seeing differently or maybe not seeing in your ER because of all of these efforts? Well, um, I mean, I think that we do um, a great job in um, getting the word out. Unfortunately, it's not always about um, just telling the kids uh, don't do something. Um, they don't like to listen to don't do this. Um, we want to help them understand the consequences of that unsafe driving. Um, and so getting that word out, I think, really does help um, support that effort of 
understanding what the consequences are so that they can say no when the time comes. And so for all the programs that happened during the school year before it wrapped up, we hope this one gives a little extra reminder during this very deadly period when they're out, just trying to have a little fun, making maybe taking a drive with their friends. Yeah. Already. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate your insight. Hey, thanks for having me.